Hello everybody, Ringo Sparky here, and we're looking at old school RuneScape today. Um, I remember this game way back, not necessarily when it first came out, but in the early 2000s, play it in the browser, and uh, this version that we have currently here called Old School RuneScape is the closest to it. Um, pretty much is an identical version with a lot more added into it. And I won't get into all the differences on it um, and the technicalities here, but this is the game we're going to be looking at. Oh, don't run out. Um, and we've just come out off of Tutorial Island uh, into the main play. And we have this castle right here, and I'm running up it uh, as one of the first things I like to do because the bank is up here. And it is an MMORPG, and there's a lot of things that we can go after and do, so there's no wrong way uh, for anything, and there, or no wrong way to tackle anything here. Um, what I am doing, though, is I'm going to try to, to trim out my inventory here. I'm not going to use magic in the beginning, so I want to uh, take these off and save them for later. Um, and you can decide to sell or deposit these items. It's your choice. I do recommend depositing them. It was very nice that they gave you them in the beginning to start off with. So you might as well use them. I'm probably not going to use my pickaxe. Uh, things that I do really like to keep on me though while I wander at any time is the axe, tinderbox, and net. Or maybe a fishing rod. It helps you uh, cook, catch, make firewood, and then cook the food that you have here. Um, I don't need the, the dagger. And we may want the bow and arrow. I'm going to hold and choose to hold that um, on. Um, and uh, we want our gold. Uh, to see so so there we go I mean it, it's your choice just really wanted to show you that it was here I like to keep a nice clean inventory and I want to equip my stuff back my arrows oh, my arrows can be equipped that doesn't matter okay so you can run around and do whatever you want this is not the Iron Man guide or the best ultimate, you have to do this to be the most efficient. Um, this is more a free play with me bringing my knowledge and, and helping you out more if you're a new player or just kind of overwhelmed. Um, we're going to look at, you know, kind of just the beginning play and getting you set up so hopefully you're comfortable with all of your stuff. And by no means, uh, is the way I'm doing it, again, the correct way or best way, because there's, it's an open sandbox game. You can kind of play it however you want. Uh, there are obvious better ways than others, but we won't get into that. So we have these quests, and we are a free player right now. We don't really want to spend the money on this, because we're, we're testing it out. We want to see what's going on. Um, so helping us uh, level up and explore the world will be these these quests and they are not in order from like easy to hard or, or low to high they're just here so Romeo and Juliet is one that I really like to start off with it's nice quick and easy and we can click on it and tell it where to go we can use our larger map if we need any help to find Varrock but luckily it is due straight north we just have to cross the river and we have our bridges here. So, kick off the big map. And we can use our mini map up here, which we definitely should get used to using. Um, and this is a lovely little hunting ground uh, for, for the very beginning. Uh, if you want, you know, take your time and chip away at it and see what nice little drops you'll get. At the very beginning, or if it's your first playthrough, be cautious about what you pick up, especially in that area, um, because you don't know its value. 
And I guess you don't have to be cautious about picking it up, but be cautious about what you do with it because you don't know its value. And uh, some items can be a lot more valuable, not only price-wise, but just useful in quests. Uh, so you don't have to, you know, spend the time trying to farm them later or spend the money and wait for them and hope for them on the exchange. Uh, the grand exchange is something we'll show you later. There's a little bit of a restriction on it for new players. Be cautious about these wizards right here. They uh, are a little bit higher level and they will shoot. Uh, um, I'm trying to see if we can get one. I got to right click, you know, compared to you, they seem like they're a little bit higher level because they're level seven and you should theoretically be level one. I think technically we're higher than that, level three. Um, but the reason I say is watch out for those wizards is you don't know how many of them might hit you or get aggressive towards you and they uh, um, shoot magic so they can do it from a range to distance. Okay, this is the guy we're looking for, Romeo. We said we would meet him in the center here by uh, Varrock. All right. Um, text is so small down in here, so I'm kind of just clicking through it. Definitely read it, uh, you know, obviously it's storyline, but uh, it'll hint and give you ideas and let you know what to do next, and also you, you'll know what to click on if they give you an option. But, let's see, where can I find Juliet? Usually the top option, but... You know, always just be careful, know what you're reading. <laughs> Don't do like me and click through it all. All right, is there anything else? I don't think we really even need to click through either of those lines, uh, but we'll fly through it. Come on, and then, okay, thanks. Just so you can see, you know, some of the dialogue. Like I said, I don't think we had to click on all of that. We've used up the rest of our run, so that's going to have to slow recharge. Luckily, uh, Juliet's not too far down the road. She's just here to the west. And then in this big house here, we can walk right in. People have left the door open, so that's very nice. I hate dealing with, with the doors here. It's just one of my little uh, annoyances of the game, but it's cool that they have all the detail. Oh! I don't want to close the door. I want to talk to Juliet. Leave these doors open so you know, nobody else has to keep clicking through them. And you don't have to click through them on, on either way as well. Okay, we can speak to Juliet. And that way she gives us our message. And if you are like me, kind of click through them. Pull up your quest list and you can click on Romeo and Juliet. The door is open, there we go. Just square back up my map here. Okay, you can click on it and it'll kind of tell you what your next step is. You should take the message. It's pretty good about things, you know, highlighting or, or putting in red message, Juliet, Romeo, Barack, you know, Central Square. But gave us the gist, the most important part of it all, so you can get to the area and then uh, use common sense or open up your eyes or try to figure out uh, where the next step is. So it's like, oh no, we came back to the center square. Where's Romeo? Oh, he's right there. Sometimes he'll actually hide inside of the building. Um, but if you've ever played through, you'll know that. If not, just search the general vicinity. Sometimes, uh, NPCs have a little further walk path than you think, or they might get hung up and caught in something. Uh, it's just the way it is, you know, we're not gonna hand feed you everything. You do have to use your own brain a little bit, but just have fun, enjoy the game. It's a lot more complex than you can think right, of right off the bat, especially for such an older game uh, with graphics that look like this. But it is MMORPG, so you are out there with other people. And, you know, you can choose to play with them. You can do the Iron Man portion so you don't have to. And we're just, again, to, to let you know that we're 
just jumping through some of these quests um, and using that to level us up and get us organized. Go see Father Lawrence if you weren't paying attention or reading, and he is about the same distance away as Julia is, just a little further um, northeast rather than directly west. I still want to save my running because we've got a you know we've got some more distance in this quest to go and uh, it doesn't recharge that fast as you can see. I want to make sure I'm on the right path. I believe this is the building. We want the church. Um, Father Lawrence. And, yep, here it is. You can always make sure by the little symbol too. And, there he is in the back. We'll go up and talk to him. And initiate more of this quest here from him. It'd be very easy if you're not paying attention on bigger screen looking here and not know that uh, something's going on down here. But just take the cut screen and keep moving on through. Not a whole lot of excitement here. Uh, Unfortunately, if you're like, oh, I want to jump out there and cast spells, and shoot arrows, use my sword, or all these other different items I found online, um, we'll, we'll get there. But get yourself a nice, good foundation, a nice base, that we progress to the quest along, and he's telling us where. And right now, I do like to kick on those boots, and I'll show you why, because we're going to go... Uh, to the apothecary but we want to we, well one we don't actually know where it is um, we, we use our our map skills our detective skill we can find out that it's right there um, and hopefully that's the one we need to go to but we know it is um, what we want to do though is they're going to make ask us to make a potion and that's the, you know part of the conversation we have i think it even says in here that's like the reason we need to go there is because of the potion well they're going to make us get the ingredients for the potion too or ingredient it's one it's quick it's easy we just get it right now while we loop around um, i didn't have enough to keep going but i got to where i needed and you might actually want to save your speed uh, as we go over through those black wizards again, just because it'll be a little more convenient. So we only need one. That's all we're here to do is make one potion, and it just needs one berry. And there, here are the bushes. They are uh, only in this spot in this little triangle. Just go near where the mining is, and then head like a little northwest, and you'll see uh, the potions. So you may want to make sure that you're kind of hugging the wall as close as possible. It's hard to say what's going to go on here. Um, but just cut through. I'm really surprised. Yeah, there we go. And, and I better hurry. Or it kills you. And it happens. We should have walked around and been safe. Take the death, nothing special. Um, we do get the area and it kind of explains about what's going on, okay? Don't follow me, you can go back in the west side of uh, the fort and take a little bit longer route, um, or you can try to risk it and think you can come through here. But death is gonna start uh, explaining to you that he won't really accept any items that are worth 10,000 coins per item, um, but the more expensive items he will take or can be lost, and that when you die, you've got 15 minutes to get to your gravestone um, before your stuff becomes open for anybody to take, much just like loot is from any monster. So heads up on all of that. This is what it looks like and um, you have your portal here. So don't yell at me <laughs> and scream, you got me killed, you showed a way to get me killed. Uh, you know, watch the video and be patient and see how everything plays out. 
Um, this is more just a demonstration and me playing through having fun. Um, but I do want to just show you what the game is like in case you have uh, an idea, or you've been looking into it, or maybe you've been playing it and haven't quite figured it out. Uh, I, I do apologize, or I, I feel bad though if maybe you've gotten through some of the art articles out there and the guides and don't understand them or they, they haven't been working for you. There's just so many different ways to play the game and hopefully you'll see something here as I play that might help you as well. So we're just going to come back up here. This will get us uh, to where our body fell and we can pick up our gear and hopefully never have to experience anything like that again. Um, especially somewhere where it could be like in a dangerous area still because you can see oh, he's kind of triggering and coming at us. Uh, definitely because you can see, you know, it's an aggressive area and we're not strong enough. And with 15 minutes, um, that's not a whole lot of time to get back there, you know, if you're having trouble and trying to heal. Oh, did I get it all? It's great. I just left the shrimp, which it's already gone. Who cares about the shrimp? Um, you have to re-equip your stuff, and that can also be another dangerous aspect um, as you loot your pile, because if you have a full inventory, and you go to pick it up and you're wearing you know a bunch of armor and you know full gear set up well you, you won't be able to pick up your whole pile at the same time much like you saw for some reason i wasn't able to pick up the one piece of shrimp that was in mine so and be cautious that you know you might not have enough slots to pick up everything that you were carrying before all right Oh, we don't want any of those potions. That's not something uh, we were talking about, so I must have clicked on the wrong one. So, can you make a potion for me? Let's actually talk about something else and then talk about well, Juliet, which will trigger us going forward and getting this. So then, um, looks like a he. Hard to say, we have no idea really. Oh, yep, there we go, mustache and beard. Still could be a question, but it shouldn't be. And uh, we have our potion sitting right there. If you're not sure what to do, always just keep our quest list up and find out who we need to take it to. Juliet, who is just a little northwest of us, you know, west of Barak, but still, I kind of sit that in Barak still. See what it's considered. I mean, you could maybe say that her her uh, house lies on the outskirt, but you know, pretty much, uh, I would say that's still part of the town. <clears throat> hmm. Right. Come back to the door. See the other people running around doing thing. And don't think that uh, everything I show you is everything there is to the game. There's still plenty that uh, I need to do my research on and things that I'm always stumbling on here and there um, that I didn't know about it, as well as they do add some things here every now and then. Uh, not a lot of major stuff, but the game's been going on for over 20 years. Who knows what they will continue to add in down the road. Alright, just one more talk. Talk, talk, talk. Move the quest along, but we get our cutscene. And this definitely means we must be on the right path to some kind of a quest. Or uh, moving it along, seeing how they're giving us a cutscene. Uh oh, she drinks it and falls. So this is what we wanted, this was the whole plan, and we're going to have to go back to Romeo and tell him of everything. 
Annoying little doors. There's the friend or the servant. Not sure exactly how they classify her. You can go out. Looks like somebody's doing some fire making training. That was nice and easy when you can just go right down a line and do it as efficiently as possible. I'm going to kick some boots on because I know I'm not far away. And uh, we'll have to talk to Romeo for a minute or so and hopefully that will recharge in that time or so. So there he is. We can go tell him of what has happened and what he's done. We'll get not only this kind of cutscene, but he transports us uh, to the cellars. Oh, I have to click so he continues. There we go. Now we're in this cellar. And then we can go down and see her body. As you can tell, I like this quest because straight shot north, it's not hard to find. Romeo's right in the center of town, so it it's, you know, stands out as one of the easiest spots that you could even stumble across um, without any trouble. And it, it's just been back and forth talking. We picked up one item. Um, but other than that, we didn't really do anything else. We got five quest points, so that's a, a, a huge jump. Um, but nothing else. Uh, no gold, no experience. So it hasn't really pushed us a lot. Uh, it hasn't really pushed us forward um, in terms of like an RPG element. I don't know why I say that. In, in I guess it hasn't pushed us forward in like a skill settings portion. Uh, if anything, we're probably back uh, or negative because we've died instead of gone forward. Uh, but I'm just gonna organize my inventory and then we're gonna go into our next uh, second quest here. I don't know why I'm like OCD about this. We quick equipped our arrows um, and. Probably should have eaten our bread. Maybe we could have taken the hit um, earlier. That's what it's there, but we still have some food. Okay. Organized, caught up, done talking. Let's look at our quests again. The next one that I, I like and should be nice and easy for us is good old Ernest. Ernest the chicken. This is just complete classic uh, old school room skin. Just can't get through, well, I guess you easily can get through the game without this, but come check it out and, and see, you know, the elements of RuneScape and some of the stuff that makes it uh, on a very low level, uh, the enjoyment factor. I mean, we'll come into harder quests and stuff that requires more skill uh, and knowledge and challenge our abilities. But, um, We'll go here first. You could choose, the, there's a, a quest um, that is very, very useful, and I don't even think it's, I have to double check if it is on our actual list here. I think it's something just slightly separate um, because it was put in and implemented um, later. So I, I will talk about it more um, when I do the next video, which will probably be um, that quest first and only that quest, or maybe if we have some time, we'll throw in a second one um, and jump around, I think off the top of my head, I think it's pirate or something. Yeah, pirate treasure. Um, but we'll do those. Oh, shoot, where am I? I'm on the We'll do those another time. Um, so make sure you keep an eye on where you're walking because we want to come right to the manor area here. Uh, it's surrounded fully by a gate and a lot of these trees. These dead trees you can go after right now. There's tons of them right here. Nobody's ever in this area. I shouldn't say nobody's ever. Who am I and how do I know? Uh, but you can see nobody's here right now. It's not a busy area. 
Um, importantly, you have this quest right here. And that's why we're here. But yeah, if you wanted to level up your uh, tree skill, or your wood cutting skill, um, here would be a fine place to do it for those first few levels, like first five, until you can get to oak. So actually up to first 15, I believe. I don't think there's anything else between normal and oak. Uh, but we speak to her and aha, uh -huh, it's a quest. So we'll forget all of the other stuff and move back into the quest. The whole reason of what we're doing here, using these quests to project us forward. Give us some item, gold, uh, quest experience, and hopeful or quest points, and hopefully uh, actual uh, experience into you know maybe some skills or so, so we can uh, hey yo we don't need to chop wood yeah so we can just have a better grasp of the world and move around it uh, safely a little bit better. Come through the front door, the next door, and we want to go straight upstairs. Uh, we're just doing a beeline all the way up to the top floor. The spiral staircase kind of hides depending on your view, but it's always there. Right click around and you'll see it. Um, and I come up here to talk to the professor. That's what she, uh, she wanted us to come figure it all out. And this guy will know exactly what's going on. Looking for a guy named Ernest. Oh no, well, he's that chicken right over there. So then he tells us that he needs some items from us and uh, we need to go around the house basically to get them. I'm going to save the last uh, item, <laughs> the last half. I'm gonna save one of the items for the end because uh, it could be a little difficult for us at this extremely low level, combat level still three. It shouldn't have changed at all because we haven't done anything. Um, we jump on the second floor, we have the fish food and we just simply need to walk through the correct doors. We can go and snag it. Um, I've never had an issue with the ghost, but then again, I've never been level three trying to uh, run around here. Okay, it doesn't seem to be aggressive at all. Um, just run through and get it. You don't need to worry. That one's level 19, 19, but they're not really aggressive or they didn't appear to be. We're good. We need to find some poison. Uh, so as we jump straight through and go straight to the back, then we can open up and move a little bit more around on the first floor. And in the back corner here, we'll consider this like kitchen um, and then we can open up this door into what might be the pantry and find the poison right there on the ground it's green it blends in and looks just like everything else um, and you know it, it's hard to say like well why you know if you can click on these you'll just hover your mouse over and you'll see or right click and you'll see like what's there and how you can interact with it if there's anything all right, fish food and poison down. Maybe saying, why do we need it? You also may be saying, that looks like an item, rubber band, I need it. Let's wait for that. That's going to be the, the possibly harder item to get for us at our current level. So again, forget it. Come back to this door. There's some shears here. You did not start with those, and they are an item used for uh, crafting if you want to you know, deal with wood and or wool and thread, stuff like that. Um, you'll need the shears for the wood. Wool, wool is the right word. Uh, oh, wait, did we, and then there's the shovel. So make sure that you pick up the spade. That's uh, one other thing that's kind of easily overlooked. You don't pay attention in that room. Come back here and we get a wander all the way around the house. Um, and it is just a long walk. Let me kick on some, some boots so we make this a little quicker. Uh, we want to come to the far side of the house. We first want to uh, stop and hit the compost pile with the spade 
That gives us this nice key. And uh, that's also a reason why we're going to save the rubber for a while, because we didn't have the key to open that door. Uh, oh, oh, don't, don't, don't put your hand in there. Okay, it just says you find uh, a small key. We already have a small key. Oh, you find a small key from the uh, other thing. So yeah, we, if we go to search the fountain first, we find this piranhas in it. Put the poison on the fish food and then use the fish food to act, interact with the fountain. And then you can see they all die and float to the surface. And then you can search the fountain and find what you need here, the pressure gauge. All right. So that is uh, maybe the, the, the first two are in a sense kind of easy. Um, because our first item, all we had to do was get two other items, use them to interact with each other first, and then uh, use it to interact with the fountain, and we got what we needed. So we're going to go back into the house here, and we can actually go check uh, for the item I said that we would hold last. Um, that rubber gauge. Now that we have the key, we don't really need to hold it to the last. There's, there's no order in getting these items anyways. Um, so uh, it really doesn't matter which way you go about or which order you go. But when we open this door, what we're going to have to worry about is this is a level 20 something, uh, skeleton that's going to come after us. So we need to quickly uh, grab it and run out. And we were fine. You know, it, it sounds like it's scary. Normal level 22 uh, monster against you will be very threatening, but you can take the couple hits and make your way through it and get in and get out. With the door shuts, he won't follow you. Um, this particular skeleton here on the quest won't follow you past that door. So it's easy to just get in and out. All right, for our final item, which does become a little trickier, uh, we need to come over here, find our hidden uh, passageway through the bookcase and then down into the ladder. And um, this isn't the end of the world. People come down here. Actually, I don't know what other people think, so I can't say what a, what a goes through their mind. Um, but what we need to do is to make sure to, to figure out what to do with these levers, and then find the oil can that's just on the other side there. Um, I believe that even if you have no idea what you're doing down here, and the reason I believe this is because I remember when I first went through this and I didn't know how to go about it. Uh, I believe in a matter of no time with you just figuring out and flipping these switches up and down, you could uh, get to the end result and through the game for um, your, your oil can. And when we come through here, we've got our new set, dude, that is right, of uh, levers. Pull D down, but we're gonna keep C up. Um, and like I said, trial and error, you could probably end up figuring out uh, how to go about getting through here. Anyways, it wouldn't take you too long. No, because me and I'm sure hundreds or thousands of other people stumbled through this area, trial and error. And it really uh, won't take you that long. It's not as overwhelming as it kind of seems with all of these different passageways and areas. So we just have to click on the, the gate um, each time to get through them, but we can see that we've done something because they are kind of cracked open. And it lets us back in uh, this corner to get E and F down. Ooh, 
some, something else hidden right over there. That's interesting. Uh, different part to the basement. We must, uh, oh yeah, I don't think we went down over there. So, so that, that's kind of cool. You can see, see that. Okay. Uh, putting down both of those, that does change our path that we need to go through. But we just come right down here and only pull down C. Go back over through here and we'll pull E up. You know, pushing C down gave us, uh, I think, if I was paying attention right, gave us the opportunity to open that door. And by pulling E, that should give us the opportunity to escape and get out of the little maze area that we're here in. And we did it. We should have unlocked everything. And see, it really wasn't challenging. It wasn't that much to go through. Said it before, I'll say it again. Trial and error will get you through it. So if you don't have a guide, uh, if you watch this and then don't remember, uh, don't worry. I have faith in you. You'll get through it. So we got our three items. Uh, we have to pull that lever to open up the bookcase on this side, but it seems pretty straightforward. It's right there and it's easy for us. And now we can run back upstairs and uh, I'll have to open the door. Uh, but go back upstairs to the top floor, talk to the professor and fix everything. And that will conclude our first two quests uh, in the game before we've done anything to kind of explore the world and get a little better uh, set up as we move forward, um, really trying to level our character and everything. All right, and there we go. We'll get some conversation from him and it's over because we've got our plaque. Uh, four quest points, 300 coins, nine quest points. So we're doing a great healthy start. Before I end this video, just so I'm not mean and uh, don't frustrate you or you get frustrated afterwards, you cannot walk out the front door. It's just a little trick or, or at least right now you won't be able to walk out the front door. Uh, I say that because I don't know if there's a trick that you can do or something down the road. Uh, but, but right now, you won't be able to walk out the front door. So we just go the same way. I'm actually going to take a second spade. They're a little handy price-wise. Hey, hey, come on now. Uh, they're handy price-wise. I'll hold off and, you know, oh, and maybe even the shears too. We're gonna put them on the Grand Exchange and sell them. I don't want to be that guy that like farms and mines up, dumps like, you know, 10, 20 on the market at a time. Uh, but, you know, putting two or three uh, will just help. It probably won't even be two or three, but putting like one or two um, can help get us a little gold and help somebody else out there. And then we're not that person just kind of farming it or being like that. If you want to do the money guides, there's a lot of ways to go about doing them and I'll leave you to, to find and do your own research on there. But here we are at where we started the quest and uh, out of the house safely. Uh, thanks very much and until next time, have fun.